This video is going to be an introduction to natural selection and the theory of evolution that was sort of founded by this guy here, Charles Darwin. And you're probably thinking, how did this old man discover the theory of evolution? How did he think, where did these ideas come from? For one, he wasn't an old man when it started. It started when he was younger, um, and he was exploring the Galapagos Islands, which are a chain of islands off the coast of South America. And he discovered 14 different species of finches, and from there he sort of started wondering, hmm... Did all of these different species come from one original species? And from there, we've get, we got this idea of natural selection. So what exactly is natural selection? Natural selection is the idea that nature is going to select certain traits based on the environment, which can be predators, food supply, climate, um, and the environment's going to favor certain phenotypes that are advantageous, certain traits in alleles, and it's not going to favor harmful traits in alleles and phenotypes. Darwin came up with four postulates of natural selection, which I am going to go through now. The first postulate or idea that Darwin came up with to support his theory of natural selection, uh, sort of like rules that natural selection has to um, follow to occur, is individual variation. This is the idea that a population or species has to have a variation of traits, which means individuals have different genes from one another, um, in order to actually evolve by natural selection. You can see in the human population, we have a ton of individual variation among us, and you can just take a look around a room and you can see um, individuality between people. Um, for example, here is a set of twins that actually have completely different characteristics. And you can see, um, here's like a family photo of their family. You can see that even like amongst their siblings, there's a lot of variation. And this is all due to the fact that when two parents have offspring, they're going to recombinate their genes. And then you can get really honestly who knows what type of genes are going to be passed on, because um, it's all very random. Unlike human beings, um, which we have like a ton of variation in our, in our population, and then you have um, species like cheetahs that are actually struggling to evolve into their changing environments because they do not have a lot of individual variation in their populations. Cheetahs are having an issue with their genes are so similar to each other. It's almost like incestuous to the point where they're not having a lot of variation between them, so they're not actually able to evolve by natural selection as efficiently as, say, the human species or any other species that has a lot of variation. Now let's move on to the next postulate. The next postulate is the idea of heritability. Now, Darwin didn't really know about DNA because DNA wasn't discovered until the 1950s. However, he did know that somehow, some way, traits were being passed from parents to offspring. So postulate two is actually super important because it is the idea that genetic variations in individuals within a species can be passed on to offspring. However, that means that any traits that are acquired in an organism's lifetime those are not passed on. So for instance, if I have a freckle, it doesn't mean my offspring is gonna have a freckle in that exact same spot. It has to be actual genes in your DNA that can be passed on. Now let's move to the next postulate. The next postulate is the idea of over-reproduction. Um, this idea is that organisms will actually have more offspring than will actually survive, and the ones that have the stronger, more advantageous phenotypes have a higher chance of surviving in their environment than ones that have negative or not as advantageous traits. So you can see in this little bug population that these two parents had a lot more offspring. They replaced themselves times about three. So you can see that red can hide from predators. That's a good trait. It's got a green check. These guys are going to survive. However, some of the blue ones are going to be disproportionately picked off before they can reproduce. So how that impacts natural selection is that if these guys mated in the next uh, generation, then they would have a lot more red offspring. If the selection process kept continuing for generations, with the red ones being selected for and the blue ones being selected against, over time you would see the population would change to have more red offspring, and that is how natural selection works. And it hinges on multiple 
parents having a lot more offspring. Um, not all of them are going to survive. We see that also with turtles. Um, they lay a ton of eggs and maybe a very small fraction of those offspring are actually going to make it to adulthood to reproduce. Now let's move on to the next postulate. Postulate 4 sort of piggybacks off of what I was talking about with postulate 3. When you have a bunch of offspring that come from two parents and the offspring are genetically diverse, it is not random which of those offspring wind up being successful. And successful individuals will have more offspring and thus will change the generations over time. On the other hand, individuals that don't have advantageous traits for the environment are either going to die before they're able to reproduce, thus not passing on those genes, or if they do manage to reproduce, their offspring aren't going to be as viable in that environment and have a higher risk of dying before they can reproduce. So it's a way of sort of strengthening the species over time because the favorable traits will inevitably outweigh the non-favorable traits in a population. The last topic of this video is the idea of what is artificial selection and how is that different than natural selection? So artificial selection is when humans select the traits that we want in a species and selectively breed those based on what traits we want to be exaggerated. So that could be in food, uh, better tasting um, in animals. It could be like smarter, stronger. So this can cause a change in the species over time. And one of those examples is going to be uh, dog breeding. All dogs originated from a wolf species and you can look around and see that there are a lot of different dog species out there and they all have different characteristics that have been selected for by people. Another example of artificial selection is seen in our produce aisle. Most of the fruits and vegetables you see at the grocery store are actually not how they were naturally found like even like a hundred years ago. Um, a lot of those plants that we eat, um, tomatoes, carrots, bananas, are all have all been selectively bred to be better tasting. For example, like the banana you can see here in this picture is a lot different than its natural form, the natural form being bitter, large seeds. So what we did was we selectively bred over generations of the plant, sweeter, like smaller seeds, and we just kept breeding those until eventually we got a product that we really liked. So artificial selection is kind of how it sounds. It's artificial. It's not not nature selecting traits based on what's good for the environment. It's basically human beings um, artificially selecting the traits that we like personally. That concludes the video that is the introduction to natural and artificial selection.